Excellent! Hey everybody and welcome back to Paul's Hardware, another dining room table edition. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this SSD, but first, I have a question for you guys. Because uh, I've done some SSD videos in the past and they tend to get, I don't know, pretty standard. I'm, I'm going to show some benchmarks on here, I'm going to compare it to some other SSDs in its range. But for you guys at home, if you, if you want to leave me a comment, what types of videos you'd like to see with SSDs, apart from just raw benchmark numbers. Um, we've seen the take an SSD and install it in a system or a laptop that has a mechanical drive and see how much faster it is. That's cool, but it's been done many times before. So if you got any uh, ideas for me, please feel free to leave them. But that said, uh, let's take a look. This is the Plextor M5 Pro Extreme. Uh, it's uh, available in 128, 256, and 512 gig versions. I've got the 256 here. And uh, I'm going to just do a quick unboxing and then show you guys some benchmarks. First off, 7mm height, so you can uh, install it in slimmer notebooks and possibly even ultrabooks, depending on the configuration of your ultra ultrabooks. Totally 100,000 IOPS reaching breakthrough in speed, which means if you look at input-output operations per second, which is a popular SSD benchmarking number to use, you should hit 100,000 with this. We'll see if that's true. Uh, true speed, pr true protects, etc. SATA 6 gigabits per second, 2.5 inch, you get a 3.5 inch bracket. There's a look at the back. You do get some software uh, along with this that's inside there that you can download to help uh, clone or copy if you're going from an existing drive. High performance synchronous MLC NAND flash. It's actually Toshiba 19 nanometer, 2 bits per cell. Uh, NAND flash using 16 kilobyte page sizes. Uh, there's also some DRAM cache uh, for, for, for caching. That's good to have. Here's a closer look at the performance numbers according to Plextor that you should be able to achieve with this drive. So as you can see, different numbers depending on what version that you're currently testing. I should be able to hit 540 megabytes per second on the read and 460 megabytes per second on the write. Uh, let's see if those numbers stand up. Some more information there if you guys want to take a look, MTBF, weight, operational temperature, and whatnot. Alright, so the first thing that we are faced with is this, which I have already put some tape over. This is the NTI SSD Solution Suite. Go to nticorp.com and that URL. Use these codes, you can get an NTI Echo and NTI Backup now. So that's cool. Added software. I'm not going to be demoing the software for today's video. I want to focus on the SSD. You do get a Plextor 3.5 inch drive bay adapter, which uh, is always nice to have if you're dropping this into an older system that doesn't have two and a half inch drive mounts. Uh, screws for that, that drive bay adapter, that's handy. Here's the drive itself. Inside the electromagnetic shielded packaging plastic thing, we've got the drive. So um, aesthetically, pretty simple. Uh, kind of a nice silver brushed metal, uh, which if you happen to be placing your SSD, in a position in your case where it's visible, which I recommend doing since these are kind of premium items, uh, it should blend in. Pretty nice. Uh, there's a look at front and back again. Uh, Plex store info and FCC stuff and that sort of thing there. Pretty standard. And then, uh, of course, your serial AT data and power connectors, as you might expect. Uh, I'm actually going to take this drive apart really quick. Let's see if I can do it while I keep talking. Um, there, this is going to void my warranty, so as always, don't do this if you purchase the drive yourself. I am returning this to Plextor once this video is done, so they will have a voided warranty. I don't know, maybe they can put a new sticker on it or something. Uh, the sticker's right there, I'm just gonna peel it off. And with the last screw removed, we should be able to get into the drive's housing. I always like to do this with SSDs just because it's, it's fun. I guess. Uh, I like looking at the internals of things. I like seeing how things are connected, how one piece is wired to the next piece and whatnot. And uh, if you're, I mean, in particular, if you're showing an SSD to somebody who's n that has no idea what the heck an SSD even is, I find it to be helpful. Um, okay. Because basically what you got is like, if you, if you compare this to a mechanical drive, mechanical drives, you'll be able to see a PCB on there. And that has a controller and, that's, and then it connects up to the mechanical elements of a mechanical drive. Um, but it basically with the, with the SSD you got the same thing, it's just they extend the PCB and then that allows them to put the NAND flash on there and then that takes the place of the spinning elements of a mechanical drive, which is pretty cool. Uh, but let me explain what we're looking at right here. First off, the controller, which is this 
uh, kind of big square uh, chip right there. Again, that's a Marvel, or I don't know if I already said it yet, but that's a Marvel 88SS9187. Uh, code name is Monet. It's an eight channel controller, so if you think about that like you might figure a RAID configuration, this can, sing, uh, can uh, communicate with eight uh, of these NAND chips at a time, and of course it switches back and forth between all of them very quickly. Uh, the other thing is that this is not a Sandforce controlled drive. Sandforce drives have been very popular, they still are. Um, to me, Sandforce drives have kind of fallen out of, I've fallen out of love with them to some extent because in order to hit the peak performance of a Sandforce drive, you really need to be using compressible data and not all data is compressible. So I'm, I've taken a liking to some of the newer drives uh, like these that aren't using Sandforce, or at least I'm waiting for LSI Sandforce to release a new controller. Uh, but again, this is a this is a Marvel one. It does have custom uh, firmware designed by Plex Store to handle the management of all of the NAND flash storage that's on there. NAND flash storage itself, as you might be able to see from the Toshiba logo, it's Toshiba NAND, 19 nanometer, two bits per cell. That's MLC NAND. Again, 16 kilobyte package sizes. And then right up here, you got some DRAM. So it's another difference from Sandforce controllers. Sandforce controllers will use part of the NAND for caching. Uh, whereas this Marvel controller actually has discrete DRAM chips uh, and you get a total of 512 megabytes of that. So it's going to write or store hot data temporarily to this or if it's doing trim commands or that sort of thing for garbage collection, uh, it, will, it will utilize that. And I find it makes a pretty good solution. Uh, you do have 16 of those NAND packages, as you can see, 8 on the front, 8 on the back. And that's a, a quick look at the drive itself. Next up, we're going to take a look at some benchmarks. And uh, we're going to be comparing this to a few drives that I happen to like right now. The 840 EVO uh, from Samsung, the Neutron GTX from Corsair, and the uh, OCZ Vector, all in the 240 to 256 gigabyte range. So we're starting off here with a look at AS SSD, and uh, sorry this is a bit cluttered, but up on the top we have the overall score uh, as well as read and write score. The Plex store is the blue. And it's hanging in right in there with all the uh, other drives. Lower left is access time. It's thousands or hundreds of a millisecond, so everything's pretty much equal there. And then on the lower right, you have IOPS. And in that test, the Plex Store was second only to the OCZ Vector in this particular test, but very good scores overall. Next up, we have ATO, a very popular test. I just took the peak read and peak write across all the tests in this one. Uh, the Plex Store scored very nicely again, 547 on the read and 455 on the right. Finally, Crystal Disk Mark, and uh, again here, the Plex Store is in the blue, so 522 for sequential read, about 450 for sequential write, and then there on the 4K QDEP32 read IOPS, it's hitting the projected 100,000, or just, just shy of it, 99,075 in this particular one, but uh, it won that one over all the others. And then again, a very good score of 85,000 for 4K QDEP32 right. So in closing, the Plexstar M5 Pro Extreme is a very fast SSD. Uh, like many of the current gen high-end SSDs, it's really bumping up against the serial ATA uh, 6 gigabits per second bandwidth limitation. Uh, so that's what I've been finding. So a lot of the high-end SSDs will perform within just a few points of each other. Um, the one thing I will say about this drive right now I've compared it uh, pricing-wise to the other drives that uh, I showed you guys in the comparison. Those are selling for about $190 to $200 right now. This one I was only able to find for about $230. Bucks. So that would be my one uh, complaint about this uh, in review, is that uh, the, I think the price does need to come down a little bit to be competitive with those other drives. But that is something that, that uh, can be changed either by retailers or by Plex Store. So hopefully that will happen as well to make this one a little bit more competitive. Apart from that, very happy with the performance uh, throughput numbers overall. It was able to hit, well, not 100,000 IOPS as it says on the box, but 99,000. So, you know, what, what can you do? Uh, and I'm sure with a little bit of finagling, you could probably easily get it over 100,000. You might just need to tweak a few of the settings and that sort of thing, depending on your benchmark. But that's all for this video. Uh, very good drive, just a little bit, a little bit high on the price. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. Again, if you have any suggestions for interesting things that you have, might consider, to show doing with an SSD for future videos. I'd be really happy to hear those. Go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section down below or maybe just a like or a dislike depending on how you thought about this video. And we'll see you all in the next Paul's Hardware video.